Good morning, and welcome to Redeeming Love Christian Embassy. Welcome to week one of our online worship experience. We're meeting virtually due to Governor Whitmer's order for social distancing in response to COVID-19. So you want to make sure to stay tuned to our Facebook page and our YouTube page for updates. Now, we'd like to invite you to join us in praise and worship, and then following, Apostle Jeff is going to join us to minister. This is how I fight my battles. 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 That's what we're doing tonight. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battle. I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you.
At this time, will you please welcome Apostle Jeff Englehart as he comes to minister. Good morning, Embassy. The church has left the building. I'm so glad that you joined me this morning for our online service. A friend of mine posted seven things that um, whether if you know if you're in a crisis or not, he said this, you may be in a crisis if your horn sticks on the highway be behind 32 Hells Angel bikers. You may be in a crisis if your birthday cake collapses under the weight of the candles. You may be in a crisis if you turn the news on and they're showing the emergency route out of town. You may be in a crisis if the bird that's singing outside your window is actually a vulture. <laughs> you may be in a crisis if you discover that your 12-year-old son's idea of humor is putting crazy glue on your preparation age. That's a crisis. You may be having a crisis if your income tax refund check bounces. And you, and you may be in a crisis if you have to borrow from your visa to pay your MasterCard. Well, there are all kinds of crises that we have that we've lived through, and there are crises even now in our in our time in our life right now. Um, we we've seen different things from the housing crisis to economic crisis, and we've lived through those things. There's there's crises, other things like world hunger. There are crises right now that are that are going on. That there's still the AIDS virus crisis that is still happening. Um, it's just it's just not talked about as much. There are so many things um, that are different crises, in our, and there's different crises that even come up in our own lives. But of course, we all know that we're in a worldwide pandemic crisis right now with the coronavirus. So what is crisis? What, what does crisis mean? It means this, an event or a circumstance that impacts your life and you have no control over it. Everyone becomes a victim when there's a crisis. When that crisis is around you, especially this worldwide crisis, it is going to impact every person around the globe in some form, in some fashion. But however, doing nothing in a crisis is just as bad. You can't just not do nothing. You have to do something in the midst of a crisis. So let's look at some examples from Jesus and exactly what did he do in the midst of crisis. As I was sitting down the other day and I was, and I was just reading the Bible, I came across a story um, of Jesus feeding the 5,000. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. But the scripture in chapter 12 of Hebrews, it says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great a cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that easily is entangled us. And let us run with perseverance the race that's marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, for the joy that is set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the Father on the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. It is so easy in a situation, in a time, in a crisis like this to lose heart. But the word right there says, Jesus has already conquered things in our lives and in your lives. It says to throw off every weight. That means, that means sometimes we've got to turn some of the news off if it's causing you anxiety. Sometimes we have to, um, it doesn't mean that we don't listen to the facts or the evidence that's out there because faith and wisdom go hand in hand. But we do have to do a conscious effort, a conscious choice to throw off those weighty things in our lives. When fear tries to come in, we've got to throw off the fear that tries to come in our own lives. I think also of um, it's easy to grow weary and lose heart when you're faced in the midst of crisis because it's about the unknown. It's about the unknown. So what do we do when we find ourselves in crisis, there's a couple of things I'd like to talk to you about this morning, and that is this. The first of all, in that scripture we just read, it said, fix your eyes. Focus your eyes on Jesus. Jesus is the Savior of the entire world. You're not the only one going through this crisis. There are other people in the world that are also going through this crisis. But if we as believers can fix our eyes on Jesus... And even those that are, are wondering and questioning about your faith right now, did God send this pandemic? 
Absolutely not. This is not God's judgment on America, nor the world. So would you turn those voices off? Would you, would you just mute those things? Would you turn the channel on some of those things and, and um, get off Facebook? And uh, just don't subscribe to that kind of ideology. Because the truth of the matter is, God is a loving Heavenly Father. God knows our, our ending from our beginning. And He would not have us wanting or begging for bread. He doesn't, he's concerned about you. He's concerned about me. So, let, so let's talk about this. So we're talking about fixing our eyes on Jesus. The first thing we want to do, fix our eyes on Jesus. Focus your attentions on Jesus. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says this, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all things then are added unto you. They're added unto you. Well, what is the word all there? Wisdom will be added unto you. Peace will be added unto you. Joy will be added unto you. Health will be added unto you. Protection will be added unto you. Finances will be added unto you. Desires will be added unto you when you fix your eyes on Jesus and you seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. Righteousness, the right way of doing things. The righteous way of doing things. All things will be added unto you when you seek God's kingdom first. Jesus painted a picture in, in the midst of crisis in a familiar uh, story in John chapter 6. It's about feeding the 5,000 people. And I really didn't think this was a crisis, but I was sitting down and I was reading the scriptures and all of a sudden I came across the story, familiar story to many of us. Where Jesus just had gotten, he had just landed on the shore, got out of the boat, and a large crowd started gathering around him. The 5,000 there, of course, we know is, is the only count of the men in Scripture. And so uh, there could have been much more people than that. But nonetheless, 5,000 people, men, is amazing in itself. And it says that Jesus took a, a little boy's lunch. He, he received a little boy's lunch. He didn't take it. He received a little boy's lunch that the little boy offered up. And in John chapter 6, 10 through 13, it says this, Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of green grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men, not including the women and the children. Jesus then took the loaves and gave thanks. He, he then distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. Verse 12 says, And when they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Nothing went to waste. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. Notice what he had the people do in the midst of a crisis. He said in the midst of the crisis, first of all, sit down. What? Who's going to sit down in the middle of a crisis? Well, guess what? Many of us right now are, are, have been asked to stay at our homes to work from our homes, just to sit down. It's actually a real biblical perspective because Jesus wants us to just sit down and focus our attentions on Him. Focus our attentions on Him. You know, as, as I was thinking, when it says, have the people sit down, because there's plenty of green grass, I got thinking about that for a moment. Doesn't that also sound familiar like the 23rd Psalm? The 23rd Psalm, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Did you know that your soul is your mind, will, and emotions? And God is saying, I want to restore your mind, will, and emotions. And in the midst of it, I'm also going to give you something to eat. In the midst of it, I'm also going to bring provision and protection to you in the midst of a crisis, in the midst of it. He wants us to give, He wants to give you peace of mind over anxiety. He wants to give you faith in place of fear, peace in the place of that anxiety. He wants to give you hope in place of despair, and He wants you at a state of rest. So He says, sit down. Have the people sit down in the midst of this hunger crisis with all these people that are hungry, he says, sit down. Hmm. 
I heard a minister once say, God wants you positioned so you can receive His provision. God wants you positioned in a, plate of, in a place of rest, in a seated position with your eyes focused on Him so He can give you provision. That also reminds me of a story back in the Bible that talks about that God wants to give you manna every morning. He wants to give you a fresh word, a fresh download every morning. He wants to give you something to chew on all day long. It's the same way in the, in the Lord's Prayer that we find out, give us this day our daily bread. That's what, that's what God wants to do to you. He wants to download peace. He wants to download His plan, His purpose into your life, not just in the midst of a crisis. He wants to do that beyond a crisis. He wants to do that every day of our lives. What a good father that you and I serve. Think about the story for a moment of Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha in Jesus. Jesus, it says in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, it says this, As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him to her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening what he had taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinners she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. Jesus responds back to Martha and he says this to her. He says, Dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these little details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about, and Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken from her. Mary discovered that she needed to sit at the feet of Jesus to get downloaded in the presence of Jesus. In the midst of crisis, take a moment to sit and focus your attentions on Jesus in the midst of the crisis. I also thought of some other people. I've also thought of Paul and Silas. Here they are in prison together. They're in chains. And all of a sudden they begin to focus their attentions and they focus their eyes on Jesus. And they begin to worship and they begin to sing. And the Bible says that the, that the cells, that the earthquake started happening. And all of a sudden every chain was loosed off every person and their foot shackles, which would be in these long, long wood beams, automatically just broke apart. And the jailer was about to kill himself. And all of a sudden, Paul said, don't do that. We're here. We're all accounted for. In the midst of crisis, focus your attentions on Jesus. I also think about the disciples who were seated in the upper room, fearing for their lives. Their Lord had just been crucified. He had just died. They had just witnessed that. And all of a sudden, they're hiding out in an upper room for fear of their lives. Oh, yes, the news has, 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 has come around that, you know, Jesus has risen from the dead. They're, they're not quite sure if they want to go out and see that or not. They, they finally make their way to the empty tomb. They find out He is. He's gone. Um, they, go, they go back in fear to the, to the upper room because they don't know if His body's been taken or what's, been, or what's happening or if He truly rose from the dead. And they're in this upper room, and Jesus appears to them and says, Peace be still. They were seated in the upper room when the Holy Spirit descended on them with fire and empowered them to go out in the midst of a Roman crisis, in the midst of Roman domination, to empower them to go out and be witnesses for Jesus Christ. In the midst of crisis, focus your attentions on Jesus, and He will give you the power of His Spirit to be empowered to go out and make a difference for Him and His kingdom and for your life as well. Whether you're in crisis or not, get into the presence of Jesus and you can find rest. Last week we spoke about four practical points and declarations as we live through this worldwide pandemic. We shared last week in Psalms chapter 91 verse 10 it says, Whoever dwells in the secret place of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. God wants you in that place of rest. He's positioned you for that place of rest so, he can, so you can receive everything that He wants to give to you. 
But if you're like if you're like Martha, if you're out always doing everything and doing work and 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 although those are good things to do, they're great things to do. But if that's if that's if that has all your attention, all your focus on doing things rather than being and becoming, something's wrong. Because Jesus wants you to enter into rest. Matter of fact, if you enter into his rest, you'll get the best. I believe that. If when you enter into his rest and you focus your attention on Jesus, he's going to give you the absolute best in your life. And I believe that. I've seen that in my own life. Once you find yourself sitting in the presence, you are now positioned. And this is number two. You're now positioned for God's provision. Once you're seated and in, in, in focused on him, now you're ready to receive from him the provision that he has for you. His provision of peace is found in John chapter 14, 27. It says, Jesus said, Peace, the Holy Spirit, I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give it as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, nor your mind afraid. Don't let your heart be troubled, nor your mind. Don't let it be afraid in the midst of a crisis. Because Jesus has given you his peace. He wants to download that peace to you. Get into his presence. Allow him to download that peace to you. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, he says this. He says, Look at the birds in the air, for they neither sow nor they reap nor they gather the barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And you, and are you not of more value than they? Are you not more valuable than the birds in the air? You are. You absolutely are. I'm more valuable than the birds in the air. And Jesus says, you know what? You're more valuable. I fed them. Don't you know that I'm going to care for you so much more, so much greater, because I love you. I created you in my image. Think about that for a moment. That's why the Bible also says that he'd have us, not have us wanting or begging for bread. He's not going to leave us in that position to be wanting or begging for bread. Does that mean that we're not going to go hungry sometimes? We might have some hunger pains once in a while. But God is not going to have you go without in your life when you focus your attentions on Him. Also, there's going to be safety. In Psalms chapter 91.10, it says, No evil will conquer you, and no plague will come nigh your home. No evil will conquer you. No plague will come to your home. I declare that over my own household. I declare that over our city. I declare that, Lord, over our region, over our nation, over our world. I declare that over the entire people of the world. That, Father, all those that are believers, I know that no plague and no evil is going to come nigh our dwelling. But I would say this. Let's begin to pray for those that don't know Christ yet and say, we want them to know Christ. We know that Jesus did not, uh, and God did not put this plague on, on people, nor the world, but He's there to say, you know what, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you through every situation, every trial, every tribulation you go through. Someone said to me the other day, well, Apostle Jeff, what happens if, if I come down with a virus? I says, you know what, if you come down with a virus, you, you follow what the doctor says. That's using wisdom. But you also start applying the Word of God and the faith that you know that the Word says that by His stripes I have been made whole, that He sent His Word and healed us from every form of sickness and disease. Believers, you have to appropriate the Word of God in your life. And when you do, it takes away that fear. Because you find rest instead of being panicked when you are resting in His presence. So there is safety. There's also health. According to Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. He took up our infirmities and He bore our diseases. That's what He did for you and that's what He did for me. Matter of fact, the Bible says He did it for the entire world. And all they have to do is just believe on who Jesus is. Believe and receive. Focus your attentions on Jesus. Focus your thoughts on Him and allow Him to download into you all the good things that He has waiting for you. Let Him download the over 3,000 promises in the Word of God. Let Him download those promises to you. Start receiving those promises by faith in your life. He also wants to download direction. He wants to give you direction. When you're seated in His presence, He wants to give you direction. He wants, you to, he wants to say to you, go this way or go that way. Or go straight. 
This is what Proverbs chapter 3, 5 says. It says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. That means you've got to stop, get in the right position, and say, Lord, I need you. You stop, you focus your attentions on Him. And He says this, He says, And in all your ways, I'll make your path straight. So in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight straight. He's working out all the details for your life, for my life. He's not shocked by, by what's happening in the world. This virus didn't take him by surprise. He knew it was already coming. He knew all these things are already in advance, but they're not from him. But I'll say this, because the Bible says that he works all things together for our good, know today that even in the midst of a virus like this, he is going to work things together for your good as well as for my good. He is going to work all things together for good. He takes a messy situation. He takes a crisis. He takes a storm of life. And He brings all those things together, my friend, to make things beautiful for your life, to make things work for your life. The question this morning is, are you positioning yourself so you can receive the Father's provision? Are you positioning yourself so you can receive all that God has for your life. Have a daily encounter with God. Have a daily encounter with Him. Say, Father, what is on the plans for today? What, what, what things am I going to encounter today? Get into His Word so He can tell you that you're much more than an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you. That the battle belongs to Him. He's already won your victory. Walk in that knowing that you know what, I really believe that, that God has just, I believe He's just rigged things in your favor. And sometimes you can't see that, sometimes you can't feel that, but I believe that He's done just that. He's working all things together for your good. Let's pray this morning. Father, I thank You that there is no good thing that You desire to hold back from us, that You gave Jesus to bring everything to us, and that you are waiting for us to position ourselves in your presence. When the world around us seems to be in crisis, you give us peace, you give us assurance that you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the blessing on us, on our coming in and our going out, and our lying down and our rising up. Thank you for blessing the work of our hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, for those that have just tuned in and, and, um, and you've been watching us this morning and you've never, you've never received Christ in your life, you know what? This is a perfect time just to say, you know what? I need peace in my life. So just take a moment and just believe who Jesus is by simply saying, Jesus, I need you in my life today. I need you in my life journey today. And at that moment, He comes into your life and He starts a brand new life. You start a brand new life. For those that uh, desire ministry this morning, we want to continue to minister to you. You, you can text us this morning at 989-992-5652. We want to pray for your needs. Also, if, if you'd like to pray with someone live on the phone, you can dial 989-686-9910. Or you can dial 989-686-9911. We want to pray for you. God bless. Have a great week. We will see you next week. Same time, 10 o'clock. God bless.